I don't need to deal with the devil, Jimmy. She dies. Uh, I go free. That's about the size of it. Oh, I forgot my first video game role. I want to see if anybody here remembers it. It's, it's when I was young. My voice was a little higher. Thank you. I was Pong. I was the voice of Pong. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's not on my IMDb page, and I resent that, but what the hell. We have another question right here from the man that let us off, and here he goes. His again. Go ahead. Korea? Is Let this, the man get some questions. Is this, is this game big in Korea? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to ask your question. Well, well it's like, like, you, it even has gone to the stereotype of Koreans like being good at StarCraft, like every single moment. Yeah. Uh, so, do you, you guys have ever watched like Koreans play? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that was Jack. Sorry, that was <laughs> no, I've seen, I've seen a little bit of it. Um, and of course, it was a lot of fun. Last year before the game came out, some people got their characters on the side of Korean airplanes. You know? Did her party one? Did one? No, 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 I thought it was cool to be involved with a game that has a character on the yeah, side of the Did you guys see that on the side of the 747 for Korean Airlines? Yes. So I... Why would anybody think that Koreans like StarCraft? <laughs> I don't know. Well, let me ask you, what is it about the game that really connected with, with Koreans over there? Uh, I would say it's their competitive nature. Is it really? Yes. They, they like okay, but why don't they just play 2, 2K baseball? Uh, <laughs> good point. Thank you. <laughs> so no, because seriously, video games, most video games outside of you know, role-playing games really always have a competitive aspect to it. So there had to be something in the gameplay that really kind of clicked over So in 2000, I think it was in 2000, uh, the top player for ladder of original StarCraft, and StarCraft Brooder was Korean, and it got really big. As, it was like a news in Korean, you know, Korean gaming you know, society. And it kind of started to evolve into, you know, Koreans were playing a lot of StarCraft. And it was uh, yeah. Silent Man. Yeah, and it's, I'm, I'm going to wager that it also has something to do with, with the competitive nature, with the fact of how brilliant this particular game is. Yeah, it's really challenging. And going with the challenging and the competitive nature, they go hand in hand. I think this is a brilliant game. It's a brilliant game, and I think that's why, one of the reasons why it is so popular, uh, you know. Also, the internet was, just, broadband internet was becoming big in Korea, so, you know, you had people going uh, and playing do they know us in Korea? I mean, the, the three of us, our characters? I, I, I just today. Oh, really? Sorry. The Koreans got their own voiceovers. They have a dubbed version. They have, no. <laughs> and then we just sucked all the energy out of the room. <laughs> So seriously, StarCraft 2 is dubbed? Yes. Must be. Yes. Sure, of course. Because well, why would it have why would it have subtitles, right? They don't have subtitles. That's what I mean. Why would it have subtitles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it did when they when they introduced the trailer. Yeah, 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 the trailer. Right. The trailer. Yeah. Anyway, this gentleman had a question. Yes. Um it's an interesting question. Do you think Blizzard would ever uh, consider making an expansion pack to the Wings of Liberty, but you get to play as the Dominion? Because Mace rocks. <laughs> 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 Hail the Emperor. Sign him up. <laughs> Sign him up. He's coming back to LA with me. He's working for me from now on. <laughs> well, that's what happens when what you finally you? find the fan. What is his question? <laughs> you, you, James, you don't care about his question. You're just excited. Yeah, exactly. Forget <laughs> the question. Find him a place. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you have the best knowledge, but my understanding is this is going to be a three-part game. Yeah, I mean, this definitely is, there's a, this is essentially a trilogy. And the basic storyline, in, in the next chapter, we're not going to be rehashing what's already happened. So it's not going to be that story from just a slightly different perspective. The story does advance. And I know that Blizzard is open to all kinds 
of ideas. So for me to say, no, they're not going to consider that, I don't think is, is correct because they're pretty creative and they really do um, listen to what the fans are, are asking for and what the fans want. And if there is a, a buzz about that, I think they're going to certainly explore it. And this is, I really don't think that StarCraft is going to end after, after the next couple of games. You know, there's, there's too much there that we can, we can explore. We can go into the, you know, the evolution of Tychus and... Well, some of us are hoping for a movie as opposed to a game. But, you know, yeah. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? I think that would be kind of nice to see come... But let, let me tell you something. Because Robert, Robert won't... He, he'll brush on it, but he won't really put it out there. Because he's talking about how Blizzard listens to you guys. If you want living proof that Blizzard listens to its fans, look two people to my right. Because I worked on this game with another actor who was playing Jim Raymond. And the fans would not stand for it. And they let it be known. And before I knew Robert, I was watching this develop. Because I don't know if you guys know, but at one point in time, I played a little part and got replaced. So I know what that's like. What was that uh, part? Oh, it was a giant robot of some kind. <laughs> I'm trying to remember his name. It was Tychus Prime or Optimus Tychus. <laughs> Sounds like a Roman gladiator, doesn't it? Enter Optimus Tychus! Huzzah! <laughs> um, so I had gone through that. So watching all the fans getting really rankled up that StarCraft was coming back without Robert Clotworthy, they wouldn't stand for it. And sure enough, as he sits here today, and one of the reasons is because Blizzard listened to their fan base. So if there's something that you'd like to see happen, like a Dominion version, dude, your best bet is to start a website or start posting on all the different StarCraft boards and get some people on board, you know? And start building that fan base and that desire. Because two things will happen. Number one, the business people down in LA at Activision and Blizzard will go, we could make money. Because believe it or not, they're not in the game of making games for philanthropic reasons. They're actually in it for the cash. So if you show them that there's money there, they'll, they'll certainly listen. And it certainly sounds like a great idea, you know? So the best thing to do is don't ask us, just, just get out there and ask the other fans and get them riled up and get them on your page and then send a link over to Blizzard and say, hey, look what I've done. And grow, uh, join the growing throngs of fans demanding that a film be made, and, oh, wow, you're at it, use the same actors that you've <laughs> used for the last 13 years, because I, as Neil said, it's all about money, and when it comes down to that, as far as the business side of things, there's not and witness Mr. Robert Clotworthy on the right, there's not a whale of a lot of loyalty that goes along uh, with that with that uh, kind of thing, you know, and it took the fans and, and so on, and here he is, and, and you wouldn't have it any other way, would you? I mean, Robert, Jim Rayner with another voice isn't going to be Jim Rayner, nor is Tychus Finley. I mean, can you imagine that voice with somebody else? Hi, I'm Tychus Finley. Well, it's about damn time. <laughs> Six, six, 350 pound black man that I sound like, right. and they would have him play the role. No, it would be Michael Clark Duncan in the movie, I guarantee you that. There you go. Yeah. But he's a nice guy, at least. He is a very nice guy. Oh, we got questions. Four. You already done two. No, you can't go. Oh, this gentleman hasn't said a word yet publicly. All right, I wish you a question. <laughs> Answer your question? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, that's a different story here, boss. Hey, uh, you followed me home, Jimmy. Kid, I keep you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that was, uh, that was, let me tell you, I, 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 I love playing Tigus. You know, everything that came out of his mouth was just fun to say. You know? Um, and the greatest compliment I ever got in my career was from Chris Metzen, who basically said, you know, you came in and you did the scratch tracks, 
and the game got delayed because we went back and rewrote it. It's like, that's, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, um, so that was, that was really nice. And, and of course, any time that people sit there and go, there's no way you're Tychus Finley. Look at you, your glasses, your turkey neck, your gray hair, your high-pitched voice. It's like, trust me, brother, I'm Tychus Finley. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so... There, there, there you go. If you have another request, we'll see you over the autograph line. Sir, do you have a question for us? So, it's, it, was a, it was a really long blank between StarCraft <laughs> uh, Brew War and then StarCraft 2. And, and also, StarCraft Brew War ended in a very, very abrupt manner, as in Carrie just kind of massacred everyone, and it all came over. But, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, but uh, I, did you have any sort of like speculations about like if there was whether or not there would be a StarCraft after you were done with StarCraft Brood War? And if you were, like what kind of like ideas did you have about it? You know, it's, it's kind of interesting because when I did the game originally back in I guess it was ninety seven because it was released in ninety eight. Um, at that point it was pretty much just a job for me as an actor. You know, you, you audition, you get a job and you move on and you know, you don't think about it too much. And it was only several years later that I even started to become conscious of how popular the game had become. Um, so I didn't really have, and one of the things as an actor you have to really resist is having too much, too many expectations or anticipation of what might happen because you're only going to be disappointed most of the time. You know, we've all been replaced, we've replaced people, and certainly it was difficult to have them tell me, hey, you know, thank you for your work on StarCraft, but we're moving in another direction. And but as, as an actor, I go, well, you know, they made made their decision. That that's what they want to do. They're going to move forward. So, you know, best of luck to them. And you know, it was it was a nice experience. Um, so to answer your question, did I, did I have any expectations or any ideas? Zero, because you know, part of my job. For my, for my own personal survival, is to not have those expectations, not to get, not to get too deeply emotionally involved in something that I really have very little control over, and you know that's why it was so much a, a pleasure to be brought back as Rainer for this next chapter in, in the saga. And I, you know, I, I may not be the greatest actor in the world, but I take the responsibility of playing this role very, very seriously. And I have great respect for every one of you and the fans that enjoy this game. This is something that you put a lot of time and effort, money into. And also, the um, what's wonderful about the game is that there's this great moral uh, message that's brought to people. There aren't a lot of true heroes out there in the world that we can relate to, especially in video gaming. Most often it's just you know, shoot them, kill them. It's just kind of mindless. There's not really a whole lot happening there. But Rainer is a very uh, yeah, this this game has a mix for for that. Yeah, and you know, and he's a as as a hero has a mix. Yeah, so so I, <laughs> I take that I take it very seriously. I have great respect for, for all of you. So uh, I know that there aren't a lot of other actors that would take you all as seriously as, and the responsibility as seriously as I, as I do. So that was one element that I brought to the role that hopefully is translated into the performance, the fact that I really do deeply, deeply care about not only the role, but what it means to the people that play the game. I, I think actually what both these gentlemen on my either side bring to the roles are really an overwhelming dedication and truth and belief in them, and that's why you believe them, and that's why you love them and that's why you follow them. Um, and uh, I truly don't think that either of those roles for me wouldn't exist without those particular voices. Um, I was not, I'll tell you a little abbreviated version of uh, a story about how much, <laughs> I too was way back then was a job in 1997. I mean, I was just a job and uh, back then to be honest with you, we're actually doing a little um, outside the union stuff because most of the stuff Video games were new enough where the, the unions weren't really covering the work for actors in them. And if you wanted to do them, you kind of they had to break the rules and, and do them. Thank goodness now StarCraft is very much in the Screen Actors Guild uh, covered contract there. 
um, for the most part. Um, and uh, 